in the last stream, we began work on this guy over here, the fission reactor from Alchemistry. So now we have the ability to uh, break down certain elements into certain other elements. For example, in the last stream, we took our radium here and broke it down into two ruthenium, which we then combined up into ruthenium ingots to allow us to create the dark nether star, which is spooky. And now we get to move on to this guy right here, the dark rune. And hopefully by the end of today's stream, we're going to have the scarab from the Atum mod here. And hopefully we're gonna be able to open up the Atum portal, allowing us to go through to the Atum dimension, which in turn is going to allow us to complete these four quests right here, which are some of the final quests required to become the volcano master. So this guy right here, the dark rune is actually pretty easy for us to make. It says, right click your runic tenebris frame with your dark nether star, then right click the core with a rune to convert it into a dark rune. So previously, we have made some of these uh, frames. I think currently we do not have one. However, I don't think it should be too difficult for us to make another one of these runic frames here. We do have the dark matter. As for the arcane gold, we currently don't have any. However, as mentioned in the last stream, I did do a little bit of resource gathering. And so hopefully we should be able to get all of the things required to make the arcane gold here fairly quickly. So one, two, three, and four, easy enough. And then as for the runic carved dark stone bricks, uh, I do remember this being quite the chain here. Uh, we can craft up the dark stone bricks. We can then craft those up into carved dark stone bricks. From there, we can craft them up into runic carved dark stone bricks. So long as we have a rune. And there we go. That's all the runes that we're going to need. That should allow us to make the runic dark stone brick. And from there, we can go ahead, of course, and make our frame. Nice. So now, if we combine that with the Dark Nether Star that we made in the last stream, what we can do is we can turn this regular runic frame into a runic tenebrous core. So let's put you down. Let's say, hmm, we'll put it down like over here, I think, by the nether portal. And then we'll right click the Dark Nether Star. That's gonna produce this core here. So now we can take our runes and we probably want to get one or two more here. But we can take these and we can right click on the call to turn them into dark runes, which is that quest complete. So now we have the dark rune. If we're going to get to the scarab, we do have to take a step back to the elven gateway core. So this thing, uh, thankfully, is pretty easy to make. It's made with three terra steel nuggets and six living wood, both of which we might have. I'm actually not quite sure how much terra steel we currently have. The answer to that question is apparently zero. That is completely fine. We should have some mana steel left over. We do. Uh, we should also be able to make the items required for the uh, mana pearl and the mana diamond. Those being a chorus pearl and an end diamond. The end diamond being made with end stone, an electric diamond, and obsidian. End stone, electric diamond, obsidian. That gets us our end diamond. And so that should be pretty much everything for another terra steel ingot here. We should only need the one, I think. Let's do... Mana Diamond, Mana Pearl, throw all three of these down over here. One, two, and three. Got to make sure you get it right on the center there. And there we go. There's our new Terra Steel Ingot, which we can instantly craft down into Terra Steel Nuggets. And then from there, that should be pretty much everything to make the Elven Gateway Core. It is. Now, the core on its own is not particularly useful. The core is used to make a portal, which we can then use to get certain resources from Batania. So if we check out the Lexica Batania here, so this right here is the portal that we're after. Much like with some of the other multi-blocks that we've made so far in the series, we can go ahead and visualize this. And I think I'm probably going to put it right about here. Now, before we can build that, we should probably get rid of the vines that are up on the wall there. To do that, we are going to have to get a new set of shears. Thankfully, shears are nice and easy for us to make. And although it doesn't show it in the multi-block structure here, we are also going to have to have some mana pools nearby with pylons on in order to actually open the portal. Now, between streams, I have gone ahead and put down a little bit more cherry wood here to get us more 
living wood. And I think I might actually go ahead and get another batch of living rock going, which we of course get from ancient mossy cobblestone, because I think we are going to have to get at least two more mana pools uh, if we want to set this up. I have also begun turning more cobblestone uh, into ancient mossy cobblestone over here, just in case we didn't quite have enough. And it looks like, thankfully, we should now have more than enough here. So as part of this multi-block, the Elven Gateway Call goes in the center, like so. You then have, I believe, regular living wood, although let me check real quick because it might be living wood planks, although I'm fairly certain it's not. Yeah, eight living wood blocks. So you then have regular living wood here, 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 and here, uh, with this here, of course, being ever so slightly incorrect. So that goes down right about there. Uh, but then the remaining three blocks here are made of uh, glimmering living wood, which is this stuff right here. It's regular living wood combined up with glowstone. Now, let me check in our system. Do we have any spare living wood? We do. We have uh, 18 living wood lying around, which is perfect. And all we need to do is combine that living wood up with glowstone. One, two, and three. And that's pretty much kind of the core body of the portal taken care of here. Now, in order for this to actually come online, we do have to provide it with mana. And it probably does mention it in the book here. Yeah, we need these uh, Natura pylons, which do require yet more Terra Steel uh, nuggets. However, thankfully, we do have those. And yeah, right here it says at least two nature pylons with mana pools directly below must be laid out in an 11 by 11 area around the core to open the portal. Simply right click uh, the core with the wand of the forest. Okay, so we need two more mana pools. Eight is not going to be quite enough living rock to get us two more mana pools. And given that we are going to want to move some of our mana from our pre-existing mana pools into the new mana pools, we're also probably going to want to invest in a mana tablet there being this guy right here fairly easy to make it's made with eight living rock and then either a mana pearl or a mana diamond much like in the past i think we're probably going to go with a, a mana pearl there simply because the uh, chorus pearl is significantly easier to make than the end diamond so i'll quickly go and throw that in over here and then let me check do we have any more living rock over here We do, actually. We have two. Perfect. That gets us to 10, so that is actually going to be enough uh, to get us two mana pools. We'll throw those down, again, anywhere within an 11 by 11 area. I usually like to throw these down kind of just directly in front of the portal, so here, and then ideally right here once this uh, pure daisy is done with the ancient mossy cobblestone. While we wait for that, though, we can take a look at the recipe for the pylons. So there are three types of pylons from Britannia. The one we're after is the Natura pylon. This is made with the previous tier of pylon, the mana pylon, uh, as well as Terra Steel and an Eye of Ender. So getting two Eyes of Ender, nice and easy. Uh, getting two of the old mana pylons here, also not going to be too difficult. We are going to need two more mana diamonds, but that's very doable. Uh, we also need more mana steel. So one block of Mystic Iron later, as well as uh, two more end diamonds. And that should be pretty much everything here for those mana pylons. We also now have uh, all of the extra living rock. We can use that, of course, to make our mana tablet so we're back over here let's have a look once again at pylons we should now have everything that we need in order to make two mana pylons and from there we should have everything it takes as well to make two nature pylons perfect we'll also go ahead and make the mana tablet so the mana tablet allows us to uh, fairly easily move mana from one mana pool to another you can also use it to power certain items from Britannia in your inventory, like certain uh, tools and certain pieces of armor and certain rings from Britannia will require mana in order to function, and you can power those with mana if you have a mana tablet that is full of mana in your inventory. For now, though, we're just going to use its mana-moving properties. So what we can do, uh, if we put down our other mana pool right about here, we can then top both of our mana pools with a nature pylon. I don't think they're too close. I think that's actually fine. And then each of these needs to have at least a little bit of mana inside in order to open up the actual portal here. So what we can do is if we drop a mana pool into, uh, sorry, if we drop a mana tablet into the mana pool, like so, and we get our Wand of the Forest, you'll see by default, the mana pool is set to take mana out of the mana tablet and put it into the mana pool with the blue arrow just underneath the, uh, the blue bar there. If we shift right click, that's going to change direction. So now the mana is being pulled out of the mana pool 
into the mana tablet. And you'll know it's working if you see these uh, blue lines here. And now if we pick this up, you can see there is a little bit of mana inside of our mana tablet. What we can do now, of course, is we can come over here, drop the mana tablet right about there. And of course, by default, it's gonna take the mana out of the mana tablet and put it into the mana pool. You could, if you wanted to, move mana with the mana spreader. So you could, for example, uh, just as we've done before with the runic altar, move the mana spreader down to the mana pool and then shoot mana from one mana pool to another. That does work. Um, however, there are two disadvantages to that. One, it is significantly slower than using something like the mana tablet because the mana spreader takes quite a bit of time uh, to actually move large amounts of mana. And two, there is uh, inherent loss with using the mana spreader. So every time you shoot mana with the mana spreader, a little bit of mana is lost. And the longer the distance that you try and shoot that mana, the more mana is lost in the process. So uh, it's definitely much more efficient to use something like the mana tablet here to move mana over to other mana pools. Okay, so once we've got both of these mana pools to just over that quarter mark, I think we should now have enough mana in each pool to right click on the Elven Gateway Core with our Wand of the Forest. And that should open up the Elven Portal. Nice. Uh, if you don't have enough mana, this will kind of just go off. It'll kind of throw out a few particles and the whole thing will shut down. Uh, but this is now open and is ready to go. And so the next quest here wants us to make this Petramia shoot. Petramia shoot? I'm not quite sure if that's right at all. To make this, we need uh, four blocks of mana quartz and four blocks of elven quartz. So mana quartz you can make by dropping uh, regular quartz into a mana pool. And then elven quartz you can get by throwing regular quartz through the elven portal. So this is kind of how the portal works here. It allows you to acquire resources by throwing certain things into it. Uh, for us right now, we need a bunch of nether quartz, which thankfully is... Uh, one of the easier resources for us to get uh, and we do in fact have 99 blocks of, uh, of quartz already available to us which is grand um unfortunately we do still have to grind these down if we're going to uh get actual quartz although if we wanted to we could use the um we could use the chemical dissolver here to break down our nether quartz blocks and then i'm fairly certain we can use the combiner to recombine into nether quartz which I imagine is quite a bit faster than waiting on our grinder, which is uh, fairly slow. So once we have over 32 nether quartz, we can take half of our nether quartz and throw it through the elven portal, like so. That's going to spit back out the elven quartz. We can take the other half of the nether quartz and drop it into one of our mana pools here. That's going to get us the mana quartz. And then if we combine those up like so and like so, we should then basically have almost everything for the flower here. The only thing we're missing in the middle there is a Coblonia seed. And if we check our system right now, we currently have uh, three Coblonia seeds ready to go. And given that we now have a, an automatic cobblestone generator uh, over here, we actually don't really need the Coblonia seeds going forward anyway. And so that should be pretty much everything for this seed. However, I'm going to assume, yeah, that it does have to be done uh, on the Artesia crops. So uh, let me quickly grab all four of those, all four of these, and our seed. Block of mana quartz, block of elven quartz, and coblonia. And there we go. We get ourselves the Petramia seed. Petramia seed. But we also need an Ender Sanuka here if we're going to complete this quest. So the Ender Sanuka is made with four Ender Pearls, four Ender Lily Twine, and one stick. Now, I'm not quite sure what the use is for this uh, Ender Snooker here. We do have what it takes to make it, and that is a quest complete there. Um, I did take a quick look inside the Unique Crops Guidebook and couldn't really find anything uh, relating to it. We might need it for the shoot, maybe? But either way, the unique thing about uh, this shoot here, this seed, is that it has to be grown at Y level 10 or lower, and when it's planted down, it will convert obsidian into volcano core blocks. And we also have to make sure that the plant has enough light. So now... If we're going to get the volcano core blocks required to make the scarab, we have to get down to Y level 10 or lower. And as you'll know, the current problem with us getting down uh, from Y level 62, which is where we currently are, down to Y level 10 is the 50 levels of lava on the way down. And from there, we can once again make a brand new obsidian skull, which is super nice in that uh, while we're holding it, we don't take any, uh, any fire damage. We can actually jump directly uh, into the lava here and no damage is taken, which is super nice. So now what we have to do is we have to get down to 
Y level 10 and build out an area where we can actually uh, utilize our new seed. So I have been told that we can use our building gadget for this. Now, in order to actually use the building gadget, we do have to provide it with power, like it needs to be charged in some way, shape or form. This does work. However, it's also pretty slow. And I believe what we can do if we wanted to is we can get an energy battery from integrated dynamics, which we should be able to make. And then we can charge that up anywhere over here using our uh, weather station. Uh, for example, let's put it down for now, like right there. And then if we grab one of our energy interfaces, we should be able to put some power into this. And then once this has power, if we pick it back up and you'll see if we hover over it, uh, it says that you can shift right click to enable auto supply. So now if I shift right click this guy, it's going to become all colorful. And that should start, I think, auto charging this. Yeah, you'll see now that's filling up with energy much, much faster than it was over in the uh, the calculator charge over there. And the, the good news is it will continue to auto refill on charge until the energy battery here is uh, is empty. So with the building gadget here, if we press G, that's the default kind of uh, key to open up the building gadget uh, GUI. I believe what we can do is we can build a vertical column and we can set the range here to a max of 15. So what that's gonna do is if, for example, we grab some cobblestone and we don't have that much cobblestone in our drawer here, so I will go and quickly check to see if we have some cobblestone over here. We do have a little bit, maybe not enough. We might have to try and get some more, but uh, for now, two stacks will, uh, will be a good start here. Uh, but if we go ahead and shift right click on any block of cobblestone, that's going to set the building gadget to cobblestone. And you'll see now what it's doing is it's building a cobblestone pillar. So I believe the way this works is that if you try and, if you right click on the top of a block, so if I right click here, that should build a 16 tall, or sorry, a 15 tall cobblestone pillar, which is not what we want. If I right click on the side of a block, for example, if I were to, let's say move this guy, and then let's say we also get rid of this, if I were to, and also maybe get rid of this as well, if I were to right click on the side of a block, so I'm, I'm right clicking on the side of this grass block here, I think that builds seven up and seven down. So we have effectively built somewhat down into the lava. So I'm thinking if we do this, 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 and this, what we should then be able to do is get rid of the top half of the cobblestone, leaving us with the bottom half here. And now if we dig one, two, three, four, five, six down, I think that's as far as we can go before we hit lava. I think one more block there would hit lava for us. The Twitch chat is also pointing out at this point in time that we can swap from vertical column to build to me. And that's going to allow us to uh, essentially continue to build vertical columns, but just towards us. And you can kind of see how far down <laughs> this goes here, actually. It's quite far. But uh, if we do this, again, I think the max is 15, but we can kind of actually build pillars like this all the way down. I just built a cobblestone pillar there, and we can kind of do the same thing all the way down here. It is tremendously slow, but it is going to get the job done. So quite a bit of time later, and we are now pretty much there. So I've swapped over to using Ancient Cobblestone uh, because the Ancient Cobblestone here is uh, something we have like 30,000 of, whereas uh, regular Cobblestone we're pretty short on. So right now we have four pillars of Ancient Cobblestone going all the way down to Bedrock. So if we were to go ahead and grab either sand or gravel, basically just anything that will fall, uh, we should be able to start popping this down. Preferably not like that. And that should start getting rid of some of that excess lava, at which point we can then, of course, go ahead and remove all of the uh, gravel. And we should have basically a hole that goes all the way down to Y level zero. And there we go. So we now have a ladder that goes all the way down to Y level zero. So uh, if we do slash home, just because it gets us up to the surface faster, we can go ahead and for now, at least, we can grab one dirt. We can grab a torch we do need a light and we can also i guess take some bone meal with us i don't think we'll be able to bone meal this uh this plant or not 
But if we take the shoot, and we also take a hoe, I'm hopeful that we can uh, grow this thing. And I guess the thing that we're looking for here... Oh, of course, I forgot completely that it transforms obsidian into volcano block cores. Okay, so we're actually going to have to take some obsidian with us. So I spent a little bit of time digging out a slightly wider area here at, uh, at the bottom. I basically went out into the lava and uh, using the building edge, it uh, built out extra walls around the ones we already had. So uh, we do have a little bit more space down here now. So hopefully we can hold this, throw down our chute, get some light down here. Uh, although I may have lost my torch actually in the lava. So let me do a quick slash home. Let's quickly grab hopefully one of our pre-existing torches. And of course, that is wishful thinking chat. We do not have any torches ready to go, but thankfully uh, we can make some fairly easily here. And you can do slash back to go back to where you were before you did uh, slash home, just to save us having to you know spend the time to go up and down this ladder. And then I'm going to assume that if I put obsidian like here, here, and here, once this is fully grown, hopefully that will transform this obsidian here into volcano block cores. So that was actually surprisingly fast. And I will, uh, oh, it says no tool. Maybe I just break these with my hand. In the top left there is where it says no tool. Although I do get the feeling that maybe some kind of tool is required. Ah, the Twitch chat is telling me this is where the snooker comes into play. I see. If we shift right click, we can pick up the volcano blocks with the ender snooker. Nice. Okay, so that gets us the... Uh, that gets us three of these uh, volcano block cores and yet more experience there, taking us uh, well into level 100. So now, if we want to make the actual scarab, we need four arcane gold ingots, which should be easy enough. We need three dark runes, which we already have. We need one emblem of the golden scarab, which is made with just the one volcano block core, four gold ingots, four gold blocks. And then unfortunately, the hardest part of all of this is making yet another dark nether star. So let's do a slash home. Do we have what it takes to make four blocks of gold? We do. We have more than enough gold to make one, two, three, four blocks of gold. Do we have what it takes to make four arcane gold? Not quite. We're just missing a little bit of uh, this dust here, which is almost good to go. We just need a little bit of bone meal, which thankfully we have ready to go over here. So let's get uh, yet more of this uh, blue dust, and then that should be enough to make hopefully two more of these and at that point we're very close we're just missing two arcane crystal dust and as luck would have it i'm pretty sure we have arcane crystals we do so if i grab two of those and quickly give those a, a crush underneath the old uh, gravity block here yeah that should be everything for the uh, the crystal dust there and so at that point for the scarab which i will go ahead and bookmark i think the only thing that we are missing is that uh that nether star We've got the emblem. We've got the four arcane blocks. We've got the dark runes. Yeah, we just need one more dark nether star. And there we go. Two wither skeleton skulls. So I think, chat, that finally we should have everything that we need to make this uh, this nether star here. So uh, we've got the Mendelevium. We've got the titanium. That was from the uh, ink sex that we already had. We have ground down a bunch of energy on seed so we have three stacks again of energy on dust if we go and uh, run those through the old chemical dissolver and uh, that should be enough to get us a stack of the dysprosium here uh, then other than that we just have the uh, lutetium to go which is made with the chorus root we do have chorus root being smelted here we do need the full two stacks to be uh, good to go before we can actually get all of the uh, lutetium but that shouldn't take too long and i guess while we wait for that we can uh, take our dysprosium uh, I'll put all the phosphorus away, of course. Uh, we can start breaking down the uh, purple blocks as well. But so uh, we can also go and grab some seeds so we can start getting the cellulose for hydrogen. All right, chat, I think we are finally there. It took a while, much like it did the first time, but with these two ruthenium ingots, that should be everything now for yet another dark nether star and once we have our second dark nether star we can then finally make the scarab flip pin heck we've done it all right <laughs> so the way this works as described in the quest here is 
To create a portal, we have to first create a flat 5x5 base of sandstone, then create a ring of sandstone on top of the previous layer, followed by stacking two sandstone on each of the corners of the previous layer, and then finally we fill the inside ring with water and then toss the scarab in. So, we need sandstone. Thankfully, we have a bunch of sand here, so getting uh, a bunch of sandstone really shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, we're going to need 25 sandstone for the base layer. We then need a further 8 sandstone for the second layer, so that's 33. And then we need another 8 after that, so we need 41 sandstone, I think, in total, to build this portal. And... Despite having a lot of sand, it turns out that we don't quite have enough, so we are going to have to go ahead and once again make another uh, sand burst seed here. All right, so quite a few sand burst seeds later. We now have the 49 sandstone required. So where do I want to put this down is a good question because it is going to take a bit of space and uh, we currently don't have too much space. I think we're going to get rid of the cactus farm. We don't really, I say farm, it's just an area that has cactus growing in it. Uh, we might look at automating the production of cactus later if we need it uh, fully automated, but for now we definitely don't need a cactus just kind of sitting here. So instead, let's do one, two, three, four, five two three four five we're going to fill in this bottom five by five platform we're then going to build a ring on that base like so and then you do two in the corners like so we then fill this middle area here in with water and i probably should have built this like into the ground a little bit <laughs> because it's quite tall here but this is fine And once that is full of water, we can then drop in the scarab. And boom, we have an Atum 2 portal. So, next time, chat, we're going to come back. We're going to invest in some armor, because we still do not have any armor whatsoever. Uh, I have been looking through JEI with the Twitch chat at a couple of different options for armor. Initially, I was thinking Terra Steel, and we might still go with Terra Steel. I'm not quite sure yet, but uh, there are other pieces of armor, such as the Soul Steel armor, and also things like the Arcanus armor here from uh, Forbidden and Arcanus, which is also uh, very good. And in the case of the Arcanus chestplate, it's actually better than the Terra Steel there. So we might look at getting into that. If we're going to get the Arcanus armor, we are going to have to do this bit of the quest line first and uh, head through to kill the dragon and also find some dragon heads because uh, the recipe for uh, this chestplate does require some dragon scales, which require dragon heads, which we can find in the end. So uh, next time we might come back and start with the fusion reactor, head on through to the end, fight the end dragon, try and find some end dragon heads, make some better armor, head on through to the tomb to fight the pharaoh, to get the pharaoh hot, and then also maybe look at uh, fighting these uh, greater sprites and guardians as well, or sprite guardians as well. And then the stream after that, I assume we'll come back and maybe try fighting the regular Gaia, uh, as well as hopefully getting the steel donuts. And that will probably be everything to become the uh, Volcano Master. But uh, for now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there.